climate change describe a change in the average conditions, such as temperature and rainfall, in a region over a long period of time? The Earth's climate is constantly changing, and a variety of factors, both natural and human, can influence the climate system. However, today's climate scientists believe humans are responsible for much of the recent changes. Humans are influencing the climate and the earth temperature by burning fossil fuels, cutting down forests, and farming livestock. Fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and gas produce a large amount of carbon dioxide when burned. Carbon emissions trap heat in the atmosphere, leading to an overall rise in temperature across the world. In fact, Earth's average temperature has been increasing much more quickly than expected over the past 150 years. The last few decades have been the warmest on record. Hello and welcome to the second There Is No Planet B podcast presented by the Valentine Keystone Lions. Thank you for taking the time to listen in as we partake in discussions surrounding climate change and how it is not only affecting our natural world, but the personal world of teens. My name is Jonathan and I will be your host alongside members of our Keystone group. Joining us today are Samantha, Nigel, Norman, and Christian. Yo. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. How are we doing today? Hello, <laughs> Joe, Jim, Pell, Christian. Hello, hi, Merck. What happened to the last two? All right, Just so. sweet. <laughs> Toys young. Climate okay. change. All right. So, yes, today we are missing Aaron and Valerie. They are partaking in a play, a school play. Mm -hmm. The play is Clue. Clue. Like the board game Clue. Who does that? I am. <laughs> about it. Well, I was not informed about it. Don't worry, we got all the important people Look, here. scripts aren't cheap, guys. <laughs> okay. So, um, we are going to talk about uh, understanding climate change today. But first off, you know, we just want to say best of luck to Erin uh, on her acting career. Whoop, whoop. So, the man just slip and fall on stage. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, She's moving there forward. For moral support. Um, I'm going to pose the question, what does climate change mean to you? Absolutely nothing. Why? Because of that. I don't really understand most of it. It's like I don't understand the science behind it, and it's just something that I'm not well educated on, so I don't understand it. I think, like, also, I think climate change isn't exact. like, I mean, obviously you should do research on the science, but, like, it's also, hey, this is your home that you share with, like, six billion other people, you know? Be conscientious. Don't be a jerk. And you really don't need the research. If you live long enough, you'll actually see the change. You can feel it and see it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's April, snow, and all this. It's supposed to be spring. And last time I checked, it doesn't snow in spring. So a lot of factors can determine what happens. But you really don't need the research to see what's going on. All the snow in Texas, too. Heat man is hot. <laughs> it's too hot, right? It's too hot. It's a little too warm. It's in too here. hot in the yeah, first two the days. Best, <laughs> that's the best um, take I heard about climate change all day. Okay. It's hot, man. So Chris, Chris elaborated on it already. What confuses you about climate change, right? I don't know. There's just so much like contradicting um, science behind it. Yeah, because like. One of the things of, to be changing because of climate change are the bees, right? Everybody knows the bees. Everybody loves the bees. And, like, one minute they're fine, and then the next minute they're, like, not okay. So there's just, like, a lot of stuff going on with the, I don't know, the science because so much of it clashes. I think the bees are just picky. <laughs> I love bees. They're so cute. Uh. Bees are life. <laughs> you feel me? And what confuses me the most is that, like I said earlier, you can see and feel it, but when you actually watch the videos, it's like I was watching the video, like the polar ice caps of North Pole and the ice by Antarctica as it's going on, you see this ice is disappearing for the last 30 years as it's going past, going down way, way, way mm -hmm. more. Then when you think about it, ice is made out of water. And so when that ice starts to melt, you get more water, then the more water you get, the more this um, sea level rises. So, like, for states that's, like, underwater, like Florida. Louisiana and New Orleans and all that, oh, they're below sea level. They're so going to be in trouble. As more Florida. ice boats, you get most water, but then, then the water go over that threshold that they built up to, then it's just, like, 
There's a big problem. They, un- they turn yeah. to Atlantis. They underwater. <laughs> yeah, I had uh, I recently saw that if we keep on this current trend with the increase in temperature, uh, in about I think like 40, 50 years, uh, Florida might be submerged. Oh boy. So. I mean, oh, I'm pretty sure Florida man gonna survive. Yeah. <laughs> right, the Florida, Florida man's gonna be the reason why. Yeah, I mean, nonetheless, you know, that's a little more Miami Beach. Something, something as catastrophic as that, right? Like yeah, no. It, 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 um, it's slowly kind of happening, it's right? creeping its way mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. So it's really scary if you think about it. Yeah, so, in a way it is, but in the range, the rate that this is going, by the time that we are no longer here. It's probably gonna be way worse if we keep going the way. Well, we're supposedly going. we're supposed like big companies are doing something about it, and I know it's something that will take time. Like if Amazon wants to uh, go completely solar or something by like 2050, and like the worst part is we may not see the changes in our lifetime because this is stuff that's just gonna take so long, and I can't believe we let it get this bad. You know, like how did we? do this to our house. We don't want anybody tracking mud in our house. If we're over here, you know, leaving trash everywhere and killing other people who live with us, other creatures. I just can't believe we let it get this far. People only change when they get caught. People when, are naive. They're they doing all these making vehicles and all that, but they're not thinking about the outcome. And when they actually see the outcome, people call them out on it. Therefore, they're willing to make a change. But if you didn't call them out, I 100% guarantee you they would have kept doing what they would have done. That's, pro- that's true, yeah. People only change when they get cold. For sure. I've seen, uh, talk about companies. I saw this this video about, it was like this old ad about a water bottle company. And they were saying how you're the only one that can uh, change. Like, you know, stop wasting, stop uh, throwing water bottles on the ground. But the other ones are making the water bottles. Like, they're, they're our fault, too. They're making so many water bottles and, like. So much first, um, like it was like it was the video was about like plastic, how like only like a certain percentage, of, a certain percentage get recycled, and only like a certain percentage really stay recycled. And it was, it was like, just like because there's like, certain plastics and things that you cannot recycle due to what it was used for. Yeah, because you know, on your water bottle right now, it's like a number on it, like probably like one or two, and it's like seven categories, right? Like eight, and only. Two categories can be recycled. Really? Only two. And guess how much get recycled out of that two? Ten percent. Ten percent. I knew it. Ten percent of that get recycled. And only like three percent of that is in like a closed loop, which means it keep on getting recycled. The other like whatever, six percent. Okay. That's why it's like change turns something that can't get recycled again, like a bench or like a some that can't get recycled. Yeah. Okay. And if they don't, they just put it in piles, ton piles, like car tires. Yeah, and the video also says like Asian, like uh, Asian countries, they used to import a lot of uh, plastic, like plastic waste to just have sit on landfills. So like in like, um, I think like Malaysia, if you go there, it's like certain areas got like mountains of trash and people live right next to it too. That's like the worst thing. Like all these things, all these foods, all of our convenience stuff, like anything that we buy, I can't tell you how much bubble wrap, how much tape, how much cardboard all goes into wrapping this stuff. And if it's like glass or something, I kind of get that. But even then we have all this paper that we probably only use one time. So you could reuse it to wrap up the glass, you know, but it's just infuriating as to how much plastic is just in wrapping alone. And like plastic water bottles drive me nuts. Even though I like drink from them sometimes, it's just the idea of taking someone's water, putting it in a bottle, a plastic bottle at that that's not really recyclable, and then making people pay for water, you know, when sometimes their taps don't work or like if they genuinely need water, why do people need to pay for a natural resource and a terrible quality bottle that might kill them? I don't. It's just something that just blows my mind. And then with the trash, going back to Nigel's point, all them piles of trash, they eventually get burnt, and that goes up into the air and it pollutes the air. Yeah. And if it get contaminated too, right. like then it even can't even get recycled. It just stays. Why do you think so many people wear gas so masks? About in in like 
I think China, right? We have to wear the masks because the pollution is so bad. I can't believe it. Yeah, and you know that now we're seeing two different forms of pollution, right? You have the actual physical bottles, and then you have what you know companies are you know pumping out of there. Right. Like there, there's companies that are like next to lakes and stuff, and all that toxic waste is going into that body of water that can no longer be used because of all that toxic waste that they're being thrown away. All around, we are doing a horrible job in conserving our planet. Like, See, but the everyday person does what they can, recycling. Like some people have to drive, you know, for right. their jobs. But the thing is that not a lot of people do. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. So, so how do you all, as a as a as a small group, right, start to educate the community, start to educate kids, family members? How do you get them to see and change their habits now so that we get positive impacts in the future? So the thing with kids, you have to start like gently. Like you have to start young, but you have to be, hey. Like kind of like a gentle nudge where, hey, this is your home. Your parents don't want you messing up your house, right? Well, this earth, this entire earth is your house, so do what you can to save it. And then, you know, keep bringing it up, make it a whole unit, and then at about 10 or 11, tell them, hey, the earth is changing. The weather is going wackadoodle, and you, by you doing your part, you're helping um, keep the climate in check. Yeah, you can do that. I'll take them to a landfill and show them that they're morning trash. Oh, yeah, that's smart. <laughs> like, they got your breakfast right there. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> and as you say, start them off young. You got to show an example as well because kids, not just kids itself, but actual people, when you think of Earth, you think of this big, immovable object that only space can move, that it only can move itself. So when you think about how long we can last or the, the leeway we have until this happens, a lot of people really doesn't want to do nothing at the immediate time. Therefore, they always plan at something like, I want to do this in 2044 or I want to do this in 2192. They think about the longevity of the project, Earth, call it Earth a project now. They think about the longevity of the earth rather than the current situation. And that's why if we show an example that you can lead, you can start now other than waiting about 100 years, it can change. It might not change a lot, but it can change. It helps. Mm-hmm. For sure. And going back to Val's point, wait, Sam, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry about it. Um. Setting an example to kids at a young age is very important because you can tell your kids to do something, but if you mm-hmm. don't set that example yourself, exactly, they're, yeah. they're, they're going to lead off what you show them regardless of what you say to them. But also, kids are ruthless, and they'll be like, hey, you're not recycling. Then, sure. you know, you know they've learned because sure. <laughs> they have, like, you know, zero filter to work with. So they'll, they'll call you out, too. Sure. They're not afraid to do it either. And, like, crazy thing is that a lot of kids are not self-aware outside. Right. Because I'm self-aware all the time. That's just because the way I was, ro- I was rose up, Raised? grown up, raised <laughs> as a child. Et cetera. Just, you know, trust English nothing is outside. <laughs> so I don't throw my trash on the ground. Right. Yeah. And it's also, it's like, a lot of the ways I walk, I walk, walk or, like, bike, I uh, go the same way back. So I don't want to see my trash that like, I threw on the ground from earlier today. It's going to eat at you at night. Exactly. You're going like, to see it. You're going to be like, I did that. Oh, they, Ouch. They got my, they got my chips. <laughs> <laughs> they look kind of nice there. <laughs> so even just being like a little bit more self-aware outside can, it's just, can like really make a difference for yourself. For sure, yeah. Like I said, common sense is a virtue. It shouldn't be called common sense because it's not common. That's the crazy part. It's a virtue and all of a sudden. The last time I checked, it was free. Well, I think I think that's where we have to kind of take the lead, right? And we have to kind of, going off the information that we learn, uh, we kind of pass it down to, you know, the, the younger generation, right? And it can also be the older generation as well, too. Right. Uh, so, like, on a club level, you know, we can implement, you know, specific programming, 
we can implement, you know, maybe like an Earth Day where we involve the younger kids and we kind of give them this information, right? Right. But the problem is, where do we get that information from, right? There's a lot of conflicting, you know, Research. battles going yeah. on, you know, climate change real, sure. is it not? We're, we're, where do you stand on it? What is the general understanding, right? Where, where can we meet in the middle and, you know, move forward from there? I don't know. It's difficult because, like, because of the contradictory information, there's so much of it nowadays, and I just don't know what's real and what's not anymore because people will see something, and it won't be something they want to hear, and they'll be like, oh, that's not real. But then when or people see something they, like, want to believe is true, they'll be like, oh, yeah, that's real. But it's just, honestly, so difficult. It's really difficult. I have so much trouble with it, and I just don't know who to believe anymore, and it just freaks me out that I don't know what's real and what's not, and it, it just stresses me out really bad. So where do you guys get your information from? Like, where, where do you hear about climate change? Like, where? Internet, the news, the YouTube videos. Politicians. Politicians. I just feel to, it. To be more specific, I get I try to get information from places that specialize in said information. For example, I rather get other than the news itself. I rather try to go like on NASA because they deal with outer space and all that other stuff. So they should have That's a smart. real understanding of yeah. what they can see on this planet of ours. So I try to get as much. That's actually really smart. That's a good weather. idea. Well, trust, information. Yeah. Trusting so, the scientists, right? Trusting yes. the scientists. Trusting the people who actually them. be up there to the people who be down yeah. here. But yeah. even like I said, you really don't have to even do research. Like, yeah. like, a, like seeing your own trash on the streets, it make you feel some type of way. I mean, it's the only thing right there, too. <laughs> like, because I used to, like, like when I was in elementary school, I used to take like, a, like an alley on my way to school. It was just way easier to get the. Yeah, same. I used to do the same thing. And, when I saw my own trash on the ground, I was like, I got to pick it up because it's mine. So I, I got to deal with it. And, no, that, and like, no, nobody else going to pick it up for me. Don't so. they got garbage cans in alleyways, Marjorie? What? Don't they got garbage cans in alleyways? Yeah, they got garbage cans in alleys, too. So you got all the garbage cans in the alley. You don't decide to put it in there? Exactly. You damn bad. I picked it up the next day, though. I can tell you that for sure. Yeah, that's a problem I got to work with, too. Like, I'm not no perfect human being. I throw trash in the ground. I'm not proud of it. Not the best thing to do. But yeah, that's something I also got to work with. Like, seeing trash that I throw away is like, kind of guilt. Like, I got to feel guilt. I kind of feel guilty about it. Because you know it's wrong. True. <laughs> like I said, it's something I got to work with. It. Everybody has to work on it. Cause it's like we talked about sure last week. everybody in this room has thrown garbage in the floor. At least I time. actually have not. Um, not I always throw of. it away. <laughs> But, like, it's like we talked about last week, right? It's convenience over, like, um, Self, common sense. Self-preservation. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's just, there's just so much. There's so much wrong with everything climate-wise that's going on with the earth that it just kind of, it just kind of makes me sad that we're still, we know that it's happening and very little is being done to help, you know? Well, it's not too late, right? Right. The, the world isn't on fire yet. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, right. The course still, that it's going through, it might be. I don't think it will start. Well, it, there were a couple of fires, you know, but. Of course. Yeah. But, you know, there are a lot of good things that are going on around the world, you know, with people, um, with governments working together, uh, people in nonprofits starting up. There are people who are trying to make a difference in the world. As they um, should. So, you know, hopefully, you know, we can play our part in you know, helping to affect climate change, whether it be, you know, on a small scale or maybe it transcends, transcends into a larger project um, and affects more people. So uh, you have probably learned about climate change in the classroom from the adults you know or on the news. It's important to have a solid understanding about what climate change is and what causes it in order to know what we can do to fix it. Equally important is where to find accurate information from leading scientists and experts so that you can get the facts and not just someone's opinion. Don't get it from Facebook. True. Oh God. <laughs> it's all our fault. Do your research, right? Do your research. Don't ever get yes. your facts from Facebook. You can get your facts from Facebook. You can get your facts from Facebook. Just make sure you're diligent. Fact check. Fact checking, right? Please. 
All right. So with that, uh, that brings a close to our second Chapter podcast. Two. Whoop, whoop. All right, Joe. Give us some inspirational quotes that you <laughs> may have read or that can come up on the spot to I end us read. off. That's come on. I got y'all <laughs> one. I want. I want.